You know, it's funny. Um, this morning, very early this morning, uh, probably for four or five a.m., having coffee, checking my email, blah blah blah, all those things. I got a a royalty report from one of my uh, stock agencies, and uh, it's not important which one, but the August royalty was twenty five dollars and seventy four cents. I remember so well when that royalty was two hundred and fifty dollars. I remember well when it was twenty five hundred dollars, and yes, I remember well when it was even twenty five thousand dollars for the month stock photography has changed and for us to survive we need to change so that's exactly what this presentation is about a to z music musings mantras and mandates from yours truly a mobile photographer i'm affectionately known in the 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 uh, social media space is PhotoJack. You can certainly follow me on Twitter. But it was always my, I don't know, my, 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 my love and my vision, not so much to own and operate a photographic business, but to live and express a photographic life. And that's exactly what I'm doing today, thanks to my beloved iPhone. Let's, let's look at some astonishing statistics. As of this month, October 2021, the world population is inching close toward 8 billion. It is 7.9 billion as of today. That means that we collectively as a world population shoot over 1.4 trillion photos per year. That's 1.4 trillion photos per, e per year. You divide that 1.4 trillion by 365 and you get 3.8 billion photos per day that we are collectively as planet Earth shooting. Now, I did some math this morning after I looked at my, my $25.74 royalty report, and I figured out that we actually upload 3 billion photos a day to the internet. Now, I'm not much of a mathematician, but we are uploading 3 billion and we are shooting 3.8 billion. That means our shoot to share ratio is off the charts high. That barometer also tells me where the bulk of what we shoot and where it's going. It's going online. So if we are shooting per day 3.8 billion photos and we are uploading 3 billion to the internet, mostly to social media, that's around 79%. Again, shoot the share ratio off the charts, thanks in most part to mobile. Now, what devices do we use to capture those 1.4 trillion photos? Look at that first one, 90.9% .9 of those 1.4 trillion photos, they come from mobile phones or smartphones. Right in the middle, 7.3% dedicated cameras and 1.8% tablets. So if you do some further math, the number of photos per consumer is 224 per year. The number of photos, of course, worldwide is 1.4 trillion, but the, uh, the number of photos per consumer per year is two. 224 224 or 1.6 photos per day. Now, many of us shoot a lot more and many of us shoot a lot less as you're going to find out. So I think the question that I get really often is, okay, yeah, I get it. Consumers, yes, 90% of the pictures that we take is planet earth. They come from smartphones, but are professionals using 
iPhones or smartphones for photography. I love this uh, study from about a year ago. Uh, Suite 48 Analytics, it interviewed uh, 881 professional photographers. And this is kind of what came back. Do professionals use iPhones for photography? 100%, 100%. B, let's go to Barbados. On February 18, 2011, 702 in the morning, this was my first iPhone photograph. And I swear to God, it was love at first sight. It was my aha moment, my true epiphany. Now, I had no idea at the time the, the effect and the, the, the ramifications that this capture would have on my life and career, but uh, the results have been far reaching. Again, I'd had a phone in my pocket for a long time and I'd never actually even taken a photograph. This was an iPhone uh, four shot um, and it started something which has not stopped. As a matter of fact, it started a journey of one million photographs over the past 10 years. I knew there was something. Now, I didn't know, it took me a few years to kind of figure out the why smartphone photography or iPhone photography in my case was so near and dear to me. Simplicity, no fuss, no muss. Portability, small form factor. Creativity. You could do it all in one, in one device, shooting, editing, sharing. Number four, anonymity. You didn't stand out, you blended in. You became not one of them, i.e. photographers, you became one of us consumers. Accessibility, I, I found that the iPhone, uh, which continues to do today, gives me amazing accessibility to places and people and events and experience that I never could get with my big camera. And then the velocity, the click to consumer is the most incredible ever. I'm shooting, I'm editing, I'm sharing within seconds, not minutes, within seconds, the velocity off the charts. And then, of course, uh, versatility shooting modes, because with the phones, different moments in life require different shooting modes, Pan, uh, panos, time lapse, video, slow-mo, all those kind of things. And then connectivity and authenticity photography for life. I can't really, and, and, and I say this really from the depth of my heart, I can't completely talk about my iPhone photography conversion without going back four years before that February 11, 2000 date and give you a little bit of context. I was in Bodh Gaya and I happened to, uh, it was May the 24th, 2007, lo and behold, uh, it was Buddha's birthday. And this life lesson would set the stage for my iPhone photography to come. I was with my dear friend, uh, Manab Lohia, also uh, a business partner at the time in Photos India. And we were shooting uh, this event in Bodh Gaya, uh, which is kind of, um, you know, the birthplace uh, of the Buddha. It's the Bodhi tree where Buddha found enlightenment. Now, I'm not telling you this because I have skin. In, I'm not a Buddhist. I have no skin in this game. But it was one of those experiences where I shot literally, I think, for 48 hours straight, day and night. That's straight. We were on a stock shoot. 48 hours, day and night. It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. 
At the end of that 48 hours, although you don't see a picture, I sat with these pilgrims under the same Bodhi tree that Buddha sat under. Now, it probably was sleep deprivation, but this is what I heard. Jack, the secret to becoming a better photographer is to become a better human being. Let me repeat that. Jack, this is the message. The secret to becoming a better photographer is to becoming a better human being. And it took a while for that message to sink in, but it played to the strength of the iPhone as an extension of life, authenticity, believability, realism, credibility, and I owe a lot of that to the roots of my Bodh Gaya experience uh, just four years before. Another experience that I had, which was pivotal uh, and quite directional, was the death of Steve Jobs in Lapari. Uh, a few months after my iPhone conversion in Barbados, um, I was on this ship. Star Clippers, one of the largest passenger sailing ship in the world. We were off the coast of uh, Sicily, um, Italy, and um, got up that morning, had news of Steve's passing, and I don't know. I was new to iPhone photography, so I just kind of got into the mood. It was kind of one of those things where I photographed in Steve's honor like it was my own last day on earth. It was surreal, like completely surreal. I will never forget the lessons I learned that day. I journaled about them at the end of the day. And the lessons were this, iPhone photography, it's personal. Technology is not something we do. It is something we are. iPhone photography, it's emotional. The heart of iPhone photography is not technical, but emotional iPhone photography, it's total and underscore this. Oh my goodness, this is, this is, if there's one thing I can say over and over again, the iPhone isn't just a camera, it's a platform and ecosystem for shooting, editing, organizing, sharing your photographs.